checking out a new spot in Comanche, Texas, and I am just trying to not rub my camper off on a tree. Or break a window. I hate when I get to a new place in the dark and I have to try to figure everything out. Don't really know what to expect. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of here. This piece of land is not very big. I can walk the whole thing in probably an hour or two. But what it has that is very beneficial for hog hunting is a pond of water in the back there. The wind is blowing towards the pond. So the only logical place for me to set up for tonight is back here on that side of the pond. So hogs can come in from this direction. They can come in from this direction or like this boar comes in from this direction and they won't catch my scent from any of those directions. I took this video the next morning so you could kind of have a visual. I'm sitting on the far side of that pond, hoping everything comes in across from me, but he decided to come in right beside me. The closer he comes, the more I'm just trying to hold really still. You can't tell by my shaky camera work, but I'm trying my best here. Here you can see him start rooting up the dirt and the mud, and then he's just going to plop down and waller around in this, which feels wonderful for him, and it's kind of adorable, but this is what contaminates these water sources. So this is really bad for native wildlife and any livestock that might drink out of this pond because these feral hogs are full of parasites and lice and all sorts of nastiness. And it's pretty bad on the whole ecosystem when they contaminate these water sources. Now I can hear every little splash and every little twig break. So I know he's getting really close. Not to mention, I can smell him real strong right about now. People always think that hogs smell really bad, but they don't. My friend D-Hog always describes it as uh, burnt maple syrup, and I agree with that. It's, it's not a bad smell. It's just a very distinctive smell of feral hog. You know, you know they're there once you smell that, but the only time they really smell bad is if they have urine or other stuff running down their leg, and then they can get pretty rank, but hardly ever. They usually just smell like good old burnt maple syrup. He sees me and he's way too close. People will tell you that feral hogs are blind or they can barely see. And as you can tell, he was staring straight at me. I wasn't moving one single bit and he knew there was something under that broke down tree that wasn't normally there. So feral hogs definitely can see. Not well, not near as well as they can smell, but they know something's there and they can most definitely see movement. I've been busted by a bunch of feral hogs just with a little bit of movement. So anyone that tells you they can't see has not snuck up on a couple hundred hogs. Now he's on the far side of the pond, which is so much better for me. I could have picked up my rifle and made a 90 degree turn to my right when he was on my side, but there's a 99% chance he would have seen that movement, which is just going to scare him off so I don't get a good shot. Or even worse, if he was feeling aggressive, I don't have any phone reception for eight miles. So the last thing I want is to, you know, get a boar all riled up at me out there. So I just held real still. So now he's directly across from me, which is great, but he's in the tall grass, so I can't see him and I can't get a good shot. I was going to just try to sneak across that pond but there's so many dead branches and logs and that sticky mud, it would have been really hard to be quiet. So I got my old hog collar out and I'm gonna to try to call him out of that tall grass towards me. I chose boar magnet because that call has worked for me several times before. And as you can see, his head popped right up.
So why did I shut off the collar here? Because in the past, I've had them come up and as soon as they see there's not really any hogs there, they turn around and run the other way. Plus, he's only about 35 yards away here and this hog collar is in my lap because the Bluetooth doesn't work on it. So I really don't want him coming a whole lot closer. If you watch closely here, in a second you'll get to see him scent marking. He's kind of pawing the ground, dragging those metacarpal glands in the dirt, and then he shakes his head. There's like pheromones in his spit, or these tusk glands, and he's spreading those all over too. Handy little deal. Calls him right in. I'm not going to wipe out this time. Nope. That was not graceful. They say when feral hogs root up all that soil, it causes algae blooms, which causes a ton of other problems. And looking at this water, I think I'll have to believe that. He's not small. He's cool. Spotted. Pretty. Big butt. Here's my little hiding spot. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's that big branch. 13, 14, about 14 or 15 steps away from where I was sitting. You want to see my big pig? That means I'm going to have to weigh him. I really don't feel like weighing him, but I got to. He's way more stout than I was expecting to see here. Not like a giant giant, but pretty good size. Another reason I wanted to shoot him over across the pond was because I don't want to leave a carcass in the pond. I don't want to cut him up in that dirty pond. And it's pretty much impossible for me to drag a 200 pound hog out of a swampy area like this. I'm just not strong enough and I can't get my truck back into some areas. So this little tripod comes apart into a bunch of little pieces and it's wonderful. I can carry it out onto the peanut fields where I can't drive or back in the woods, which is great. It might take me two or three trips, and it takes me a long time to get them reeled up on this thing, but at least I can get it done. And he's no hogzilla, but for just walking into a new place, he's a pretty respectable hog. 225 is not bad. Thank you for watching my video, and thank God for keeping me safe all night and bringing me this cool hog.